we can move on to our next speaker, so Carlo Calde, um, who will be presenting on some work that actually we've been doing jointly. Um, uh, yeah, over to you, and I'll just throw up Chiara. All right. Uh, so yeah, like Harriet said, this is uh, like a an ongoing uh, piece of work, and she more eloquently put it, but she wanted us to sort of answer these questions: you know, why, how, and what have we learned? So I think it's important to understand the context of sort of the collaboration. There, it, it emerged from like recognizing a lack of diversity within the measurement approaches and what they captured of energy poverty, uh, the sources and styles, and this is sort of a critique on on where was the knowledge being. Uh, generated and, and like with what perspectives and also we had like a, uh, in a practical sense we had a, like a, a small part of funding that was sort of uh, free for us to experiment and, and sort of have a, a living playing field and then why I think a lot of uh, the first set of presentations has touched on elements of this and we think going over this, these three sort of concepts helped us like see why we ended up choosing them uh, it, it was like, as Steve said, it was like in a pivotal moment that it, like there's a discussion going around beyond just like this small group and uh, it's contested, it demands dialogue, it's flexible and it has this mental dimensional uh, perspective no? uh, that, that sort of worked up with our, our ethos and what we were looking to, to do. Uh, so we designed some workshops and our, the most important thing for us that we want them to be of participatory action research, which meant that it was going to be a, a collective iterative process that would in the end try to foster one awareness and, and create mutual benefits for all the collaborators. We would want to, as in opposition to most of uh, energy poverty measurements, we wanted to capture as many energy uses as possible uh, because of, of the nature of the funding and where we were. It would be piloting with university students and with people in the energy field and we would have at, at most six hours with them and, and, and this sort of constraint of time made us also choose to, to use a pre, pre, predefined list of primary capabilities. Uh, we ended up piloting these workshops in, in three countries, well, uh, four countries, Scotland is a different country, I think, uh, in, in five different places. Uh, and, and basically we had five steps. We would start out with an intro to energy and capabilities while a lot of the workshops were done in, with people who, who were sort of in the field of energy. We had to sort of have a, a level playing field and be like, okay, it's energy in, in what it enables and what capabilities mean and how like these, these things come to play. And then uh, we would ask groups to make to list all the household energy uses they could think of. Uh, we made smaller groups of, of, of four or three people you know, and, and run through their day and, and list all of the energy uses. Then we would merge them and have them link uh, the uses with primary, primary capabilities and have them rank them. And for that, we use the list of primary capabilities from Bigetti, which uh, we chose for, for two reasons. Basically, because we found uh, newsbounds a little bit harder to work with and because we had already used it for an applied uh, uh, thing uh, with, with children so we felt it, it, it had already been tested in some ways uh, and we did uh, this sort of a small piece of paper where we gave them where they would put the energy use or, or like the, the energy service or whatever uh, they had collected and they would link it with with the number of the capability and a small reasoning behind it and then we asked them also to rank them how important is this energy uh, use is it and and why is that importance being given and then we would merge again the groups yet again and have them sort of reevaluate their their capabilities have discussions around them and sort of without whatever uh, was duplicated. And then in the in the sort of fifth step, because we were looking at students and, and, and sort of trying to find, it was like some of the first encounters with energy poverty and sort of trying to measure it, we, were, we decided that uh, the step would be like to have them agree on a criteria if we were going to use a survey, because we ended up with lists of, I don't know, 80, 80 uses of energy, we would be like, okay, what would be our criteria to decide what goes in a survey or what doesn't go in a survey? And so sometimes it would be around how many capabilities it touched or how important it was ranked or if it touched on, on number one and number five, like different criteria and also like a small session of what have we learned. And then from this, we sort of created another application in which the, 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 the team grew 
we were building up, we were taking what we had learned and we were experimenting with a new tool, which is called Ketsu, which was developed in the University of Manchester. And it's this sort of very dynamic uh, tool that is very visual and helps you sort of enable dialogues, maybe sometimes you to try and minimize the sort of power dynamics that exist within groups. And we had some new constraints. Uh, we decided uh, because of what the application we needed, we were constraining the energy use. We only use variables by a survey determined by a Mexican survey. And we were causing this marriage of the bigger team. We also were marrying with a MEPI methodology. So there was like some, some the multi-dimensional in, uh, energy poverty index. There were some constraints there and we would have overall less time with our collaborators in the workshops. So in this marrying with MEPI, what we decided is that we would take, uh, we will create new dimensions, maybe works in five dimensions, and we sort of made these dimensions to be inspired by the capabilities uh, from Nussbaum and from Bigger and sort of made this sort of Frankenstein five uh, capabilities. And the workshops were pretty much the same, except for the last two, two stages in which instead of merging the groups, we had groups look at each other and comment on them, and then just not try to work it through a survey, but just uh, what lessons were learned. Uh, we also had to sort of, if we have extra time, we'll go over this. We had extra time, so we also went over what uses were missing, what things are not in the survey, that the Mexican survey, what, what are we not asking about, uh, and also what could we rank the field choices, because we were also interested in sort of leaving behind some of this stigmatization around field choices. And so now what went wrong and what went good and, and, and sort of and those things. So, uh, well, all data collection is flat. Uh, something that we found in all cases uh, of, the, of the pilots, people will always try to test the framework. So when we ask someone to, to sort of link the capabilities, there will be, always be one that would link it to everything and say like, watching Pokemon for me enables sort of these capabilities because I am trying to like prove a point. Uh, it was most often, or I think always a man. Uh, it's just something that happens when you're trying to create work knowledge collaboratively. Context matters, who, who the groups were made of mattered, obviously the discussions that we're having, but also where we were physically. So when we did it in a, in a local clinic, discussions around sterilization and medicine came up faster than in other spaces. When we were in the school, things about uh, uniforms came up. When we were in a research center, things about renewable energy came up. So obviously we could see the impact of the, of the physical environment we had in our, in our data collection. It takes a lot of resources, it takes a lot of time, it, it, maybe not necessarily like economic, but it takes time. And, and for me, I have um, neurodivergent and it's horrible to have to like be present in that way in a space and, and be engaged. It, it is in that sense inaccessible at times. It demands engagement and collaboration. The literature can be a bit dense uh, and we have not been able to try out an ideal for these reasons. Our idea would be basically scaling up in different ways, uh, to have more time with collaborations, to be able to change the context, both uh, geographically, but also like in, in seasons, to start off with homogeneous groups that are united by some sort of identity. It could be uh, age group, it could be gender, it could be ability. <laughs> Mapping uses complexly, which is also understanding, okay, uh, a use can, can enable capabilities so can, uh, can, can make us achieve our functionings, but it can also hinder something so so that and and yeah so what went good is that it demands engagement and collaboration it demands you to, to sort of put yourself in it it creates flexibility and it challenges discourses and that's what's great about it you know we we had some expected energy uses such as uh cooking with linked with different capabilities energy uses with uh, associated with similar capabilities but bearing in importance and, and I think that here, here's like a really important point because often we add some judgments of what capabilities will be assigned to some things. Clearly, unless people would talk that it's about respect, when not necessarily is the reality of the communities that are saying that cleanliness is about respect, but it can be about other things. Um, often in, in ignored energy users, such as uh, music, were ranked really highly and always. Uh, ended up being part of the, the service or ended up being part of the, the key energy services, which are normally ignored. There was some really interesting discussions around technology, around the, the extent that cell phones are important or how not important they are. There was also widening of the discussions of the household, no debates of, about 
freelance work or businesses at home, and in particularly when we were working in rural Mexico, there was lots, well, my mom has a tortilleria and we have the same meter, we have the same gas we use for the house, so it's, it's not like we can separate it, or there's a multi-generational house with a shared kitchen, but different uh, energy meters, what happens when that happens, and also some really interesting discussions about gendered aspects of energy, like, well, some people need to shower more often, or shower differently, or some people need to sterilize menstrual cups, or they need to style their hair. And that's when something that we like to say that the common but irrefutable energy uses, that it was something that once somebody brought this energy use to the table, it was ranked a five, and maybe it only touched on one capabilities, but we couldn't remove it. It was so important for everyone that it was sort of hard to move past it as, and just try to dismiss it. And it is it's important for us because it's going beyond this sort of essential and basic uh, framing of energy use. And the good thing is that it enables these dialogues, these horizontal learning and these recognition processes that foster solidarity, which is like the best part, which was hearing from participants and saying and, and hearing and, and experiencing those recognition processes of like, well, I learned from others really more than you, which is always a great thing, but also thinking that they also, it made them think about how others use energy and why maybe something that's not important to me is important to somebody else, but also made them think about what else can we do with energy. 